Hey everyone, it's Kelly. Thanks for joining me. I am back with a new 12 by 12 scrapbook layout process video. And today I'm going to be using the Little Dreamer collection from Close to My Heart. I don't scrapbook with a lot of Close to My Heart products, but I really liked the color scheme and the theme that this collection has. It has almost like a childlike, whimsical theme to it, which I thought was perfect to go along with the photo that I'm going to be scrapbooking today. This photo was taken the first time that Aiden had his cousin stay the night at our house. And so I thought it went really well with a sleepover themed type layout with the word dream and the unicorns. I just thought it all fit together really well. So now I'm trying to decide which pattern paper I want to use as the main pattern paper on the layout. I end up deciding to go with this purple pattern paper because the blue cloud paper was just slightly off from the blue in the background on the photo and I felt like it was just a little too noticeable and that it would be a little distracting that the colors didn't mesh very well together. So I decided to go with the purple and I am going to do a little bit of mixed media on the background so I am just adding some clear gesso. So after the gesso is applied to the background I need to let it dry before I add the wet media to the background or the colors will not blend very well if the gesso is still wet. So as I'm letting that dry, I'm just going to bring some more elements onto the layout, try to get an overall feel for what the design is going to be. That will also help me in establishing where I need to put the color on the background. I like to add mixed media to where it looks like it's just kind of peeking out from the edges of the photo and the cut files and the different things that I'm using on the layout. So by having an overall idea of where things are going to be, that will help me in deciding on how much color needs to be applied to that white cardstock. So I've added a couple cut files behind the photo as a layer and that cut file is actually from Scrapbook Nerd and it is designed by the cut shop. I will link to Scrapbook Nerd in the description box below if you'd like to head over and check out the cut files they have available. The gesso is now dry so I am going to bring in some color to the background. Now one thing about Close to My Heart is all of their collections have coordinating colors so everything in their catalog coordinates they use the same color scheme throughout i did not have the blue that is the coordinating color for this particular collection but i do have quite a few close to my heart inks so i went through to see what i had that would match the blue in the background of my photo and i did test it out behind that purple pattern paper to make sure that the blue was going to match after i had applied it sometimes when you look at the label or the lid of the ink when you actually apply it to the paper i feel like it can be slightly different than what the label shows so i just wanted to make sure that once it was watered down and applied to the cardstock that it was going to match the blue on the background of my photo now i am fighting with this unicorn trying to get it off that sticker sheet the backing was starting to pull away from the sticker and i was a little worried that i was going to tear it but all is well it did not tear now I am looking at the cut apart sheet, trying to decide what I want to use for layers behind the photo. I end up cutting this apart and I thought I was going to use quite a few pieces as layers, but my photo is just under four by four and the cut apart pieces are all four by six or three by four. So I was having a hard time getting the layers behind the photo and still allowing them to peek out from the edge of the photo so i end up deciding to go back to the 12 by 12 papers and i cut some of those into a larger size to use as larger pieces behind the photo as layers so i'm just going to take a little time to get my layers positioned behind the photo figuring out where i want to put each color and as i'm getting those arranged i am going to use my close to my heart mini stapler which is similar to a tiny attacher to hold all those layers in place and speaking of close to my heart, close to my heart is actually how I started scrapbooking. I was introduced to scrapbooking probably around the age of 14 or 15. I had went on a class trip to Washington DC and had taken a lot of photos and my mom was going to a crop and asked if I would like to go along. So I went with her and I absolutely hated it. I ended up leaving early. I thought it, it was so boring. I did not enjoy it at all. And many years later, I was engaged and I had a friend who really enjoyed scrapbooking and she was having a close to my heart party and asked if I would come. Now, I already had in the back of my mind that I wasn't going to like it because I had tried scrapbooking earlier and just really thought it wasn't for me. 
But I also thought that it would be fun to put together a wedding album, so I thought I would give it another try. So I went to her party and I really liked it. I had a lot of fun. Uh, we mainly stamped and made a card and that kind of thing, but I still really enjoyed it. And she ended up becoming a close to my heart consultant and I started a hostess club and I decided to join and I was hooked. I loved it. I used to strictly use close to my heart product. I do not anymore. Actually, very rarely do I use close to my heart product unless it is something that I really, really like, like this paper pack, for instance. But I really do like close to my heart's white cardstock. That is my cardstock of choice and what you see me use on a majority of my layouts. Okay, so getting back to what I'm actually doing on the layout, I am going to add a little bit of texture to the background and I am going to use this Echo Park Beach Towel Stencil. Now, if you watched my haul video that I had recently published on my YouTube channel, I said that I had an idea for the stencil, but I wasn't sure if it was gonna work out. And this is when I am attempting that idea. So I have applied white modeling paste through the stencil and I'm actually going to use the stencil as a guide for hand stitching. So now that the modeling paste is dry, I'm going to use my paper piercer to poke holes in the corners of those X's for the hand stitching. And I actually have two reasons why I use the modeling paste rather than just holding the stencil directly onto the paper and then using my paper piercer to poke the holes. And the first reason, I was a little worried that I would bump the stencil and move it and then the design wouldn't be straight or wouldn't be even. And then the second reason, I was a little worried that if I just poked the holes in the paper that I would have a hard time figuring out which holes went together to create the X. So by using the modeling paste, it created more of a guide for me to see which holes connected together so that I knew that I was stitching the design correctly. So I start out using six strands of embroidery floss, which is what I'm using here. And that is usually what I use when I hand stitch. I really like the depth and the texture that six strands of embroidery floss brings to a layout. But because this design is so small, I found that six strands was too much. The threads were getting kind of bunched up on top of each other and almost looked knotted. So I ended up going back and just using three strands of embroidery floss for this whole stitching project. So here you can see all of those little X's. So hopefully that makes sense when I say that if I didn't have that modeling paste on the background and I had just poked all those little holes, I really do think it would have been hard for me to tell which ones went together to create the right design. And so I really thought that using the modeling paste really helped simplify that process. So here I have sped it up quite a bit and I am just adding the finishing touches of that hand stitching. This did take a little while, but I am really, really happy with the end result. I can only think of one time that I wasn't really happy with hand stitching on a layout. Almost always I'm 100% satisfied and so happy that I add it. And this is one instance I really like the texture, the pop of color that it brings and that extra design element that it adds to this layout. So the background is pretty much done. I'm gonna start embellishing and start adhering things down. So I brought back in those cut files and I've actually brought in a third one because I felt like it just wasn't quite full enough at the top of the photo. So I am going to combine all three of those cut files together as a layer behind the photo. I'm just trimming up some pieces that were getting tangled and kind of overlapping that didn't need to be there. So my title for this layout is going to be Always Dream, and I'm gonna use that glittery word always and then those cardstock sticker letters to spell out the word dream. And I thought that title was perfect given that this was a layout about a sleepover. And those glittery words and those cardstock stickers are included in the Close to My Heart compliments pack, which I guess you could compare it to an embellishment pack. There's cardstock stickers and other glittery accents. There's some words and some shapes and some flowers that all coordinate with the Little Dreamer collection. All right, so I have the cut files and that purple pattern paper adhered to the white cardstock, and I'm finally gonna go back to this cute little unicorn, and I'm trying to decide where I wanna position him on the background. So because he is a cardstock sticker, I did use my EK Success powder tool to add a little bit of powder to the sticky part of that sticker. And it turns it into more of an embellishment piece, more of an ephemera piece. So I'm able to move it around the layout without it having it stick to the background and having the worry that I'm gonna tear that cardstock background. 
I was considering adding that rainbow to the background also, but there was yellow in the rainbow and I did not have yellow anywhere else on the layout. And I didn't really wanna to have to add yellow someplace else to help balance that color in the design. So I end up deciding against it. I'll use it on a future layout at some point. I am going to add that banner piece underneath the word dream and it has little hearts punched out. Now I'm just going through some of those glittery accents that are included in the Little Dreamer compliments pack and I do pull out some of the purple glittery flowers that I'm going to add to the bottom left hand side of the layout just to help balance the glitter accent that I have on the right side of the layout with the title. Next, I'm going to adhere my photo to the background and off camera, I did add some fun foam behind the photo before I adhered the photo to the layers. So I am going to add some pop dots behind the word always just to help elevate that word to the same level as the photo. Sometimes I don't feel like foam dots are as sticky as they need to be, so I am going to add some liquid adhesive to each one of those dots just to make sure that it is going to stay secured, especially because I have that hand stitching and I have gesso on the background. And sometimes just getting a sticker or just getting tape runner adhesive to adhere to those things doesn't work so well. It doesn't seem to last very long. So by using the liquid adhesive, I know that it is going to stay put. So I'm just going to finish adhering down all of those glittery accents and then I am going to come in with my journaling. I'm going to type my journaling using my We Are Memory Keepers Typecast typewriter and I just typed it onto a scrap piece of white cardstock. I'm just going to trim it into little strips and then using my Xyron sticker maker I will adhere the journaling directly underneath the title. And then the last thing I'm going to add is the date stamp. And once that is on there, this layout is complete. In just a moment, I'm gonna bring it a little bit closer to the camera so you can see it a little bit more in detail. I will also have some still shots at the end of the video. Oh, and off camera, I did add a couple rows of white machine stitching along the border of that purple pattern paper, which you will be able to see in the close-ups at the end. I do want to say a big hello to all of my new subscribers and a big thank you to everyone who watches my videos and likes and leaves comments. They really do mean so much and I love hearing from you. So please let me know if you have any questions about any of the products or techniques that I use today. And as always, thank you so, so much for watching.